Okay, we are up to lesson 11. Um, <clears throat> and I just want to have, this is kind of a little test here to see if, you're, if you have absorbed all the information that we've had in the first 10 lessons. And uh, this isn't something you, you should, you know, when you try this out, you don't have to get it immediately. Just be able to understand what's going on here. Uh, and you probably shouldn't go on to lesson uh, 12 until this is more familiar to you if you have some trouble with it. Um, let's start with a C scale. You should be able to play a C scale in the right hand. And, uh, you know, left hand doesn't too many times have to play a scale. It just really doesn't unless you're playing classical music. And uh, so I'm not, you know, real insistent on that. But uh, left hand scales uh, can be very helpful. But you really need to be able to do it in your right hand, though. So make sure that you can at least play a C scale in two octaves. Uh, you know, fairly easily, just about this speed is fine, as long as you can get through it, okay? And then for the left hand, uh, that's what the R means is for right, C scale in the right hand. For the left hand, it's very important to be able to do octaves, okay? Because left hand, uh, in contemporary music, uh, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s uh, type music, and, and, and music today, you do octaves you know, predominantly. So make sure you can do that. Just start on the C octave on the left hand and make sure you can just function, go up and down, you know, with uh, octaves in the left hand. I think that's much more valuable than playing C scales in the left hand unless you're just really into classical music. Then, then that will become more important then. And then the third thing, so we have the C scale in the right hand, octaves in the left hand. Uh, what I have here is I have root position and first inversion and second inversion chords. And it's not so important when you play a chord to know what inversion it's in, whether it's root position first or second inversion, but you need to know what the name of the chord is. That is important. So uh, what I did here, if you want to pause your video and go through and see if you can name each one of these chords. If you play an E and an A and a C, what chord is that? Okay, if you play an F and an A and a D, what chord is that? So pause your video and see if you can go through it and without too much trouble, name the chord. Because uh, you want it to eventually just, you know, kind of pop in your mind what chord it is. So that uh, music will start, be, start making sense to you as you play. Because music is full of patterns and these chords are going to interact with each other in certain ways, which you'll begin to see uh, as we uh, move forward. So uh, pause your video and see if you can do that. And then... So here's after you've un after you've tried that. I'm going to tell you what the answers are now. Uh, we have an E and an A and a C. So if you played an E and then an A above that and a C above that, that is an A minor chord or an A chord. A C E. Okay, it's an A chord, A minor. Uh, then we move to the next one, F A D, F one bottom A and D. That is going to be the D chord, the D minor. Uh, and this one is. E, C, G. That should be the easiest one. Uh, it's a C chord, C, E, G. Alright, now I'm getting these chords because an A minor chord will always have the letters, or an A chord, will always have the letters A, C, E. You know, I could sharp or flat one of these letters and change it to make it an A diminished or an A augmented or A whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's always an A chord if you have those three letters, A, C, E. Alright, A chord, D chord, C chord. Moving on, G, B, D. That is a root position G chord. I threw you an easy one there, G, B, D. And this one, A, C, F. If you rearrange it, you can see that it's an F chord, F, A, C. All right, and then the next one, uh, F, B, D, is, a, is the B uh, diminished chord. So that's a B, D, F chord right here. And then this last one is the E minor, E, G, B, I put that one in root position. Okay, so you want your mind to rearrange these letters, you know, uh, when you see them in conjunction with each other, so you know what the name of the chord is. So, just to uh, go over it again, if I put a flat or sharp on any of these letters and changed uh, the sound of the chord, it does not change the name of the chord. It's still, the letter name of the chord is always the same. This is always an A chord, this is always a D chord, a C chord, a G chord. Okay, and if you want to do this, those of you who want to uh, go a little bit further and you want to tell me what uh, number chord this is in the key of C, we can do that. If you're not interested, just go on to the next lesson. But uh, 
You might want to pause your video and then go through and see. You know, I'll, I'll do the first one for you. Here's the C chord. So I'm going to put a Roman numeral 1 here. And then if you want to pause your video and, and, and put the numbers in, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for the rest of the chords, that would be fine. And remember to do a lowercase uh, Roman numeral for the minor chords. And for the 7 chord, make sure you put that little circle for the diminished. Okay, so here we go. Here are the answers now. That C chord was 1. Now, where's the D chord? It was right here. So I'm going to put a lowercase 2 there. The minor 2. The 3 chord was E, G, B. 1, 2, 3. F chord was a major 4. All right. And then the 5 chord is uh, here with a G chord. The 6 chord would be the A minor over here, the first one we did. And then the 7 is right here. And there's my little circle for diminished. So there's the, uh, there are the answers there. And, and keep in mind, this takes a long time to really get used to. Don't feel like uh, it has to be automatic for you yet. Um, you, know, you really have to give yourself a chance to understand it. It's a language, and you're learning a language. You know, uh, just like someone learning to speak uh, a, a, a language that's not their native tongue, it takes them a long time to really get the feel of it and to be able to communicate with it and understand what they're saying. Same thing with music. All right, let's move on to the next lesson.